Okay, we're back for part three. We were on menopause. The physician may prescribe low-dose oral contraceptives to balance the est estrogen and progesterone levels or uh, short-term hormone replacement therapy to help treat symptoms. Also, supplements like vitamin B6, vitamin E, and soy products can help with symptoms of menopause. Gynecologic history. So we're looking at age when menstruation started, details about the menstrual, menstrual cycle, any current indicators of infection, feedback on any breast abnormalities and date of patient's last mammogram, date of last pap test, looking at sexual history, sexually transmitted infections, numbers of pregnancies and live births, date of last menstrual, menstrual period, lifestyle factors including diet, exercise, smoking, alcohol use, and etc. Before the physician begins the examination, the medical assistant should obtain this complete gynecologic history. After documenting the patient's history and chief complaint, the medical assistant should prepare the room and the patient for the examination. Procedure 17.4 describes how to assist with a prenatal examination. So we're looking at the first prenatal visit. It includes an overall assessment of the woman's health status, including vital signs, weight, and urinalysis. You prepare the patient and also supplies and equipment necessary to obtain pelvic measurements, perform the serologic tests, and prepare for laboratory tests. Collect a urine specimen for your analysis, weigh the patient, measure the blood pressure, and answer any questions about the diet and health habits. Once recorded, fetal heart rate is assessed at each subsequent visit. It's important a series of blood tests also are performed during this initial prenatal visit, and so the patient should be ready and explained to or educated about the series of blood tests. Experts believe that a healthy weight gain is somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds during pregnancy. Prenatal blood and laboratory tests. Here we're seeing the hemocratic and hemoglobin levels to check for anemia, blood type, and RN. RH factors. I am RH negative, so this was very important to me with both of my children to know this so that we could get the Rogam shot. Rubella titer to determine whether the mother is immune to the German measles. Syphilis screening, hepatitis B screening, and HIV screening is suggested. Prenatal blood and laboratory tests continue. We have the pap smear gonorrhea and chlamydia cultures, urinalysis to detect protein, white blood cells, and glucose, group B strep culture of the lower vagina, non-stress test, the NST, to evaluate the fetal heart rate, and stress tests for oxytocin challenge test, OCT, if the NST is abnormal. When you're assisting with the examination, it's important to show genuine interest in the patient's concerns. You're there to support the patient and assist the physician during the examination and explain all procedures thoroughly to the patient, just like we've been doing in all of our procedures prior. They need to understand what the procedure is and what's going to happen. The female reproductive system examination is probably the most emotionally charged medical experience uh, that the average woman undergoes. It's very uncomfortable. If you are a female, you understand kind of some of those feelings that go through. So we really need to provide that emotional support as well. If the physician is male, a female medical assistant should be present during the examination. Breast examination. You're going to assist the patient into a sitting position, adjust gown so that the breast tissue can be easily exposed, assist the patient if she has difficulty following instructions to place arms above head, 
readjust gown to cover breasts after the examination is completed. And we've talked a lot about draping and how important that is to really give them the most privacy that we can to make them feel comfortable. And the physician may discuss self-examination or may have you explain it at the end of the examination. It's important that the self-examination is explained well and that you get feedback from the patient that they understand how to perform and that they're comfortable with doing that at home. The physician may prefer to examine the breasts with the patient in a supine position, so it's important to know what your physician prefers and prepare the patient accordingly. Abdominal examination, position the drape to allow the physician to palpate the abdomen. This is done to confirm normal symmetry and to detect any masses. Place the patient's arms at the side to achieve muscle relaxation. And in the case of pregnancy, the level of fundus is measured to determine fetal growth at this time. The pelvic examination, remain in the examination room to provide reassurance. Never place the patient in the lithotomy position until the physician is ready to begin. You know how uncomfortable that position can be. And again, talking about our feelings uh, when we're there, the nervousness. So make sure you do that right before. And sometimes the physician does it because they want to do it immediately. They want to talk to the patient first and then get them going. Always keep the patient totally covered and stand at the patient's side. The physician will inspect the external genitalia and palpate the perineal body. The vaginal speculum is inserted for examination of the cervix and the vaginal canal and for obtaining the pap specimen. If you have the patient take some deep breaths, this will help them to relax the abdominal muscles and help for the pap specimen to be more comfortable for them and more easily done. Next, the physician inserts two gloved fingers into the vaginal canal while palpating abdomen and mons pubis. And then physician performs a rectovaginal examinal abdominal, okay, let's try this again. Physician performs a rectovaginal abdominal examination. Abnormalities most frequently seen are ulcerations or erosions, cysts, and cer cervical polyps. After the pap specimen has been obtained, you may be responsible for labeling the specimen and preparing it for transport to the cytology laboratory. So here you see the bimanual examination. This is 1717. The uterus is examined for the shape, size, and consistency, and its position is noted. Post-examination duties for the medical assistant is to help the patient into a sitting position, remove examination equipment and supplies, and rooms should be cleaned and restocked. Follow the standard precautions established by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration at all times. Sonography. So sonography is a high frequency sound wave and it's used to produce images of body soft tissues. Skin over the area to be studied is coated with a conductive gel or lotion. There's a grayscale image which forms a picture of organs and blood vessels. And Doppler method converts the ultrasound into an audible sound that is heard. Sonography is used during pregnancy to determine the following, the number of fetuses, their age, gender, fetal abnormalities, and the position of the placenta. Placenta. So mammogram, mammography, what is that? A mammography is a specialized x-ray technique that provides images of breast tissue and is performed to identify uh, abnormal masses that would go undetected in breast palpation examinations. 
pregnancy testing. This is designed to detect the HCG, which we talked about earlier in this lecture. HCG is secreted after the ovum has been fertilized. Once pregnancy has been confirmed, the patient undergoes a complete medical and obstetric examination, and the estimated day of delivery, the EDD, is calculated at the very first office visit. We use a gestational wheel or fetal sonogram to determine the EDD. For patient education for a pregnant woman, we educate on nutrition, no alcohol, no smoking, acceptable medicines, sexually transmitted infection screening, and advantages of breastfeeding to mother and infant. Pregnant women usually are searching for information about pregnancy and wellness both during and after the birth, so it's important to take advantage of this time for patient education and help them to find the resources that they're searching for. You can also refer to breastfeeding support groups or a lactation consultant at this time. Legal and ethical issues. It's important to listen carefully to establish good communication with the patient and to assist the physician. Maintain strict patient confidentiality. We talk always about HIPAA and we always follow it as good MAs. Look for signs of abuse and learn what to say and do. This is, this is a hard one. We'll talk more about that in class, but in all of our times, if we suspect that, it's our duty to uh, talk to our physician and to make sure that that is followed through with. Even patients who show no signs of abuse should be asked whether they have ever been in an abusive relationship if verbal arguments ever become physical, if their partner acts differently when drinking or using drugs, and if the partner is overprotective and jealous. Again, this is something that will be protocol in your offices. It depends on how extreme um, what questions are asked, and you will know that protocol based on where you are. If you have any questions, you can use the question and answer board or bring questions to class want to remind you that this is a lot of information and we're going to be going through several different specialties over the next weeks. This book is great. You should really keep it because you don't know what specialty you will be going into. And once you go into that specialty, it will be important to really know more specifics. But right now we want to just look at the broad areas and understanding so that we know each of those specialties and how to assist. And you don't need to get too much into the, the tiny specific details at this time. Like I said, depending on what specialty you're working in, then you want to go back and really know all those little, little tiny details of that specialty. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye.